We're in chapter six of Wes Neal's Handbook on Athletic Perfection. This is really one of the most important chapters, the perfect goal. What is the perfect goal? You know, when you hear that word goal, you hear all kinds of things. I mean, man, uh, and I've heard that word all my life in sports. For s about 60 years, I've heard that word. And, you know, it, it usually had something to do with something that I hadn't done yet. But it was usually a very um, tangible thing that moved around a lot. It's like trying to kick a field goal through a, a field goal post that's always moving, <laughs> you know. And uh, so when it moves and you miss, well, you set another goal. When it moves and it miss, you set another goal. And um, when I read through this chapter years ago, it, it stunned me. And Wes, I thought, nailed it. And, and, I, and I, as I verified it with the Bible, I realized, yes, yes, this is it. So listen, uh, as a Christian, um, what is your goal? Let me just ask you that first. What is your goal as a Christian? Well, some people say, well, to glorify God. Well, what does that mean? What do you mean to glorify God? What specifically does that mean? Uh, to go to heaven. That's my goal. Really? Then why are we still here? I mean, we're here for a reason. We're not in heaven yet. What are we supposed to do now? What's our goal now? Well, what is a goal? First of all, a goal is something toward which you aim. What is your aim? Is your goal to win the conference championship? Hmm? There's your aim. Is your goal to be the best running back in uh, the history of college football? There's your aim. Okay. Okay, so you got all these aims. But really, a goal should be the very highest thing that you pursue that draws the very best of you. And I would contend with you that as nice as a conference championship is, I've been on three national championship football teams as a coach. And uh, I can honestly say that, yeah, that, that was nice, but it really didn't bring the very best out of me. It really didn't. It didn't satisfy a lot of things. It, it really left a few things hanging. And after that third national championship, after a while, everybody was just kind of ho-humming it, you know? And, and then anything less than that, of course, never seemed to fit, never seemed to work. You win a national championship, and the next year, if you win, you know, 95% of your games, but you don't win the national championship, uh, you're considered a failure. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. And I'll bet you you struggle with the same stuff. It should be the highest aim. And I really believe that improper goals can leave you empty. Let's say your goal is to uh, beat a team. Our goal is to win the game. Okay, it sounds good. You're down in the fourth quarter with two minutes to go, and it looks like there's no chance for you to win. What's everybody do? They just kind of quit, kind of give up. Let's say your goal was to win the conference championship. Well, you're mathematically eliminated with two weeks left in the season. Now what? You have no way of winning it now. So what do you do? Now get a new goal? You didn't reach that goal. So is that what life is, just about goals that you reach and goals that you didn't reach? And now what do you do when you haven't reached it and the season's not even over yet? Now what are your players playing for? It's weird stuff. So we're going to talk about God's goal. What is God's goal for the Christian? God's goal for every Christian, no matter what scenario you live, whether you're a parent, whether you're a banker, whether you're an athlete, your goal is to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And that's done through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that we've been talking about in a couple of these chapters. The Holy Spirit's role is to conform you into the image of Jesus Christ. And that is the goal, is to be like Christ, is to allow Christ to live his life through you in the world that he's called you to be or the lane that you've been called to run in on this earth. And so an improper goal is one that really hinders your maximum development because it sets something on, it sets the goal on something that's very temporary. And that's like that goalpost, it's always moving one way or the other. Either it's too easy or it's too hard, but it's not in agreement with God. God's goal for the Christian is to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Now, 
you know, there are people that say, well, <laughs> you know, I don't know, that seems to be nebulous. The problem that we have with our goals is that they're self-satisfying goals. They're usually goals that make us feel pretty good or achieve something on this earth that seems pretty good that most people want to get to or nobody maybe has ever been able to get to before. But the problem with that is that we fluctuate with it. If the circumstances don't fit, if it's self-satisfying, then we don't go for it. So in other words, you'll, you'll have a team that says, yeah, we want to win the title. And then in winter conditioning, at every 30-minute um, mark, you begin to see that some of them are dogging it. They're being lazy. They're making other kids, younger kids, go in front of them. They're taking an extra rest. Um, they're cheating on their repetitions. Why? Because it was a self-satisfying goal to begin with. And now, the first thing that comes along that is just as self-satisfying or more self-satisfying will make you choose that one. <laughs> So you're, you're constantly fluctuating in your goal. But the goal of being conformed to the image of Jesus, of being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you can constantly grow, grow, and grow, and be more and more like Jesus Christ. But you know what else that happens? When you do that as an athlete, or as a banker, or as a mom or dad, what else happens is that you begin to develop your maximum ability closer and closer. Yes, you become more conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, but your ability level begins to get greater and greater to its maximum. It's the only way to do it. That's why God's goal is really the only goal. There are, there are athletes who have actually, you know, like long distance runners, um, I remember reading something from Wes where, um, in a 30-day span, in one month, because he kept his goal on be, being like Jesus Christ, that he actually cut his time 45 seconds in a month in this long-distance race. Wow, that's quite, a, that's quite a bit, 45 seconds. It's because when he got tired, the goal wasn't ah, to get that, make it that time and a self-satisfying goal. And so when he got tired, the most self-satisfying goal took over. He took himself out of the equation and he chased God's goal. And God's goal never changed, no matter what. It was to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. So he did not permit laziness in his life. So when he's running and he wants to give up, because he was reminded of Christ who didn't give up on the cross, he was reminded that he should do his work heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, he was able to push himself beyond limits that normal human limitations give you that are self-satisfying. God's satisfaction in the goal, God's satisfying goal is to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And you know what? That will never be actually realized until we are in glory with him in heaven. But while we're on this earth, we get to be more and more and more like Christ. And the beautiful thing is, as we become more and more like Christ, more of our ability level comes out. God begins to conquer things like fear. He doesn't let fatigue make us afraid because now the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear, for fear is torment. You don't have to be tormented with the fear of fatigue anymore. Now you have the empowerment of Jesus Christ, you're reminded of that word, and you're pushing on through it. <laughs> and you're able to conquer new levels because of Christ. He's not gonna give you more ability than what you have. He's going to give you all the resources inside to maximize the ability he's given you. None of us have reached our total maximum ability. And there's only one way to do it, and it's through Christ. So I love that goal. And that's, that's, been, that's changed my life. So as we look at Romans 8.28, we have to also look at Romans 8.29. What does Romans 8.28 say? It says, God causes all things... To together to work for the good, for those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. In other words, God uses every single circumstance, an injury, uh, a, a national championship, being cut from a team, uh, being laughed at by the media, <laughs> whatever. He uses all of those circumstances as tests and trials and opportunities for you to give the glory to him by 
becoming more and more like him, as it says in verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God desires you to become like Christ. God's goal develops your maximum potential. Please understand that. I mean, if you're taking wind sprints after practice and you're just wore out and you're tired, most of the guys on the team, particularly those who don't know Jesus Christ, they're going to rely on their human resources, however they think, to take them through those sprints. But you can fake it. You can make it look like you're tired. I mean, excuse me, make it look like you're, you're, you're enjoying it, but you're really hating it. Or you can make yourself look like you're tired, which in terms of telling that coach, hey, coach, could you back off a little bit? But in both situations, you're not, max, you're not gonna maximize your God-given ability. So God's goal satisfies him and it satisfies your potential. You begin to reach your potential. So if you've been given five and you invest all five because you're chasing the right goal, you're gonna get a great return. You're going to get God's return, not your self-satisfying return. So what about intermediate goals? Like, you know, uh, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go bench press 500 pounds and that'll help me load. Is that okay to set those kinds of, kinds of deals? Well, Wes talks about that a little bit. Um, I think that the planning of where you are athletically. Hey, I want to get a certain time by a certain time of the year. I want to be running this speed by January because I'm getting, I'm trying to peak but by May. I think there's some make sense planning along the way. But your ultimate goal is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And you have to keep coming back to it. Because if you start limiting it with man's kind of definition of where, of, of what that goal should be, uh, you will limit God and what he wants to say. So um, how do you do this? How do you keep your eyes on God's goal? Uh, view your performance as an opportunity for God to do whatever he chooses. So whether you get first place in a shot put meet, if you get injured in a basketball game, um, that's part of God's sovereignty. But do your work heartily as unto him. How will you know whether you're excited about God's goal or not? Well, you'll know because your first reaction will tell you. If your first reaction is disappointment, anger, I want to yell at the coach, I want to blame somebody, um, that tells you that you're not thinking the thoughts of the Lord, that your goal really wasn't on being like Christ. Your goal was on having yourself glorified. That's a great indicator and barometer. Number two, you want to view each practice session and competition as a two-way evaluator. First, they're to evaluate what degree you are really performing with, like Jesus with his attitudes and actions. Okay, And uh, the second way is that these practice sessions and these competitions will evaluate your physical potential. They'll evaluate where you're at. They'll tell you, man, I could, I really have some room for improvement. Wow, you know, I thought I had that technique down, but as the game wore on, as I got tired, I realized my technique stunk. And why? Why did God allow that to happen? Because he wants you to focus upon him and maximize that performance. And so there's, there, there are always lessons to be learned through competition and through our performance. But again, the goal is to be more and more like Christ. The only goal that can release you to your maximum potential, which really gives you the best chance to win and to receive all the awards that you could possibly have, it doesn't mean that God wants that for you, but it gives you the best chance to be the best that you can is to be in agreement with Jesus Christ and let him decide sovereignly how far he wants to take that, to the Olympic Games or to being a third stringer. Either way, if you're maximizing your potential by making Jesus Christ in conformity to him your only goal, you will achieve God's purpose. The only goal that can release you to your maximum potential moment by moment is the one that God has set for you. And your goal is to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ so that you would perform exactly 
like he would perform in your situation.